I know it's wishful thinking here, but we're in the middle of February and I'm starting to get antsy about getting out and cutting some wood. The, uh, the only problem is I'm probably still a good, you know, two months away or more from getting rid of these piles of snow you see around me. So anyways, I wanted to give you guys a chance to have a look at my structure that I use in order to mill lumber. Now I'm out here in the middle of my red pine forest and this is where I get most of my lumber from. And it all starts right here. So this is the Woodland Mills HM130. And we'll just sneak in here amongst the snow. But this is the HM130. I'll end up doing a better review on this once I actually get out here and get cutting. But for the time being, uh, it's sitting here, it's in hibernation. So this thing really cuts a lot of lumber out here. And it all starts with this structure you see around you. So this structure serves two purposes. One is it keeps the rain off me, and two is it keeps the rain off the machine. So one good thing about having a structure like this, especially out in the middle of the woodlot where you're getting your lumber from, is I'm not having to haul the logs a long ways. So how it works for me, I go out, figure out what logs I'm cutting, and I got a wide selection here. And uh, basically I use the tractor or the ATV or the snowmobile. I get get some piece of equipment to get the logs over to the mill. Now, if it weren't covered in three feet of snow, you'd be able to see down here some horizontal bunks. And these horizontal bunks, maybe you get a better view under this way. These horizontal bunks more or less hold the logs in preparation for me rolling them onto the, the uh, sawmill. So when you finally get to see this thing up and operational, you'll end up seeing logs here. Right now, I think these are just, uh, these are cutoffs from when I was milling, milling in the fall, but you'll see some actual logs here and they'll get rolled down these particular ramp things here I rigged up down onto the actual bed of the mill. So that's more or less the, uh, that's more or less the process. Now, in terms of this structure, the reason I wanted to show you this, uh, this structure keeps everything sort of clean and dry and also keeps the snow off in the winter. Now, when I was building this, so we'll have a good look around here. When I was building this, I wanted to build it as simplistically as possible without having to put any type of permanent foundation in. What I want to end up doing is have something that if down the road I want to move this operation, I can take these, uh, these overhead logs down and more or less pick up shop and move along. So what I ended up doing was I looked for some fairly good size red pines that were, that were growing. Here's one of them, another one, and then you'll see them in the back here and down along the back. So what I did was I looked for trees that were well established, had good root structure, and then I put some posts from logs I cut right up beside them. So we'll sneak over here. This is a post right beside a tree. This tree's alive, just like this tree's alive. And that tree back in there is alive. Okay, this one back here. <clears throat> so I put posts directly beside the live trees. Now that allows me to not have to put any permanent foundation and I didn't have to dig down and, uh, and put these into the ground because the permanent trees maintain the lateral support. So, so it's not going to fall forward or, or, or reverse or side to side because the, the trees that are growing are going to prevent that. So essentially all these posts are here for, and you can see them in front of all the live trees, all they're here for is to more or less hold the roof up. All right, so I didn't want to damage the live trees. So I just have ratchet straps that more or less keep the post in place and the live trees do the rest of the work. So, <clears throat> so far so good. This structure has, uh, has stood the test of time here. We get a lot of snow and I mean a lot of snow. We get a lot of snow. And so anytime the snow collects, the only thing I do to ensure that it's gonna, you know, stay standing is I get out here and shovel some of the snow off. But for the most part, by using red pines, and I kept them anywhere from, you know, five, six, five, six inch uh, diameter. By using five, six inch diameter logs for the, uh, for the roof structure and some tin up on the roof, two foot spacing, it seemed to work pretty well. Now, the other thing, 
Let's trudge through the snow here. The other thing I did was I just got two really long trees. So two really long red tree, uh, red pine trees, you can see there, the horizontal ones. Those are the ones that are supporting the rafters, essentially, sort of makeshift rafters. And one thing I keep in mind is I just have to keep in mind the span here. So I don't have a huge span right now in between the uh, the two posts you see at the front of the front of the uh, the setup. And the reason being is with a snow load up on that roof, it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on that horizontal piece. So what I do is these two posts in the summertime, I can move them. That one in particular, I move over a few feet to give me a good 12 foot opening to roll logs into the mill. But in the winter time, I move that post further over so that the gap between posts isn't as great. If I weren't gonna move the snow from the roof here, I'd be more concerned about the spanning. But in this case, by me coming out and moving the snow regularly and double checking to make sure there's no uh, excess load on the roof, I feel quite confident that a setup like this would would uh, suffice. So anyways, that's my overall setup. This uh, this was pretty cheap. This setup here, I think, I think the only real costs were the strapping, which in hindsight I could have made, but that strapping there, and the uh, the tin on the roof. So this is a cheap cheap setup. Down the road, I want to move this thing. All I do, take the tin down, reuse it, and uh, I can mill up the rest of the logs up here on the rafters and move on. So pretty good setup, I must say. It allows me to easily get access. And I actually get access from the back here. I move the tractor around back and I can get in here and any piles of sawdust that accumulate, I can I can dig out and even the uh, the offcuts from, from the mill, I throw them out back here and this is plenty high to do so. So I throw them out back here, bring a little chipper around or whatever you may need and you can chip them up or pull those uh, offcuts out for something else. So pretty slick setup. Uh, one other thing I'll mention, as I whoop, try to trudge around in the snow here. Um, holy, holy smokes. Ugh. Okay, it's kind of funny because I'm standing at the uh, standing at the roof height here, and that's because I got so much snow I pulled off the roof. But one thing I did when I first uh, first came out here was I came to the realization that I have no water out here, and I need water. For the reservoir on the top of the mill. So what I ended up doing was I ended up putting a little extension right off the back of the roof here and there's a slight slope to the roof. So I run this sections of ease trough and I have the ease trough come down over to some big O pipe. <clears throat> Froze solid right now I'm sure but uh, comes down on the big O pipe and then the water drains down to these barrels here's the barrels all right so I have this on both ends and this allows me to have tons and tons of water available and then I don't have to uh, I don't have to run back and forth to a water source uh, one other thing I do so that it's completely uh, simple is I use one of those uh, those cordless drill pumps you know you see my Canadian tire or wherever you may be you put a hose in the in the what do you call it down here put a hose in the barrel attaches to the pump, drill turns that pump, the other hose goes to the top of the mill, and more or less I fill it up without any trouble. So uh, that's sort of the, the setup and that makes it makes it self-sustaining. So quite a quite a good setup I must say so myself. And finally, what's a good good uh, mill setup without a makeshift workbench? So what I did, you guys who own a Woodland Mills mill will know the crate. This is the crate the sawmill came in steel uh, steel setup. I just put an old door on there and a piece of plywood and now I have my have my toolbox out here in the vise so any any work I need I can do right out here at the mill. So anyways that's my setup. You guys have any comments just put them down below and uh, in the comment section and I'll be happy to give you whatever two cents I can give you. But uh, in the meantime thanks for watching and let's hope the the winter starts to fade away here so we can get out and actually put some lumber through this thing because it's a good mill and I want to want to show you how it works so anyways thanks for watching